chucking Evil Miss out of the ring, and he is not going to follow her, which is a wise decision, but he is being double teamed while Game Goon counts out Evil. This is dreadful. Behind Game Goon's back, oh, Gore is... Blood and Gore are just destroying Glory behind Game Goon's back while he counts out Evil. Let's get good. I am the gamer under development, and it is my absolute pleasure, guys, to bring you something that has been a really long time in the making. Like, you guys have no idea. This predates Fire Promoter. This is a huge, huge thing for me. I'm super excited. Welcome to the pilot episode of GFW, that is Good Fights Wrestling versus the world. So what we've done is we have created a Fire Promoter mode where we are playing as Good Fights Wrestling, and let me show you guys. We're up against SmackDown, New Japan Pro Wrestling, All Elite, Raw, NXT, Ring of Honor, Triple A, Impact, Lucha, NXT UK, Pro Wrestling Noah, The Crash, Progress Wrestling, Insane Championship Wrestling, Stardom, and Tokyo Joshi Pro. So that is the, the 16 companies that I managed to find real world edits for and put together to make this world that we're going to compete against. Now, this is going to be our pilot episode, so we're probably going to run into some issues. One of my biggest concerns is time, honestly. Uh, I'm going to shoot with you guys here real quick. I actually meant to test this entire thing last night and run our first card just to see how long it would take. Uh, I didn't get a chance to do that, though, because our cat had a medical emergency and we spent the night in the vet ER. So we're basically running the test right now, guys. That's why this is the pilot. Uh, I have encountered one major issue already that I'm just going to lay out there for you because this is the thing, guys. See, I'm the GM of Good Fights Wrestling, so my job is to turn problems into your opportunities, and that's exactly what we're going to do. The problem we have is that we already had a GFW pay-per-view event called Catalyst, and we have two champions from that event. We have El Fuego Negra, who is our heavyweight champion, and we have Bobby Freedom, who is our FTW champion. Y'all know what FTW means. We literally revived the FTW Championship created by Taz in ECW. The problem is that in Fire Promoter Mode, you cannot choose your starting champions. Once again, my problems, your opportunities. So tonight's main event is going to be Bobby Freedom versus El Fuego Negra for the GFW Heavyweight title. Our co-main event is going to be a rematch from that pay-per-view that is the only match that went to time and ended in a draw, which was horrible because it was a brilliant match. Uh, and that is going to be Brayden, the future Blackwell, versus AK-47. Now, the winner of AK-47 and Brayden Blackwell will face the winner of the Heavyweight Championship match next week in the main event. Next week's co-main event, however, will be the loser of each of those matches facing off against each other for the FTW title. That's the plan for right now, guys. I think we're going to do some big tag matches here. Uh, I am concerned about time, like I said, so what I was thinking is what we might end up doing is just maybe skipping the first couple matches, like the rookie matches, sort of the dark matches on the card. I hope that works for you guys. I'm going to do it just to make sure we don't run out of time for our main events. Uh, real quick, though, I am going to run you guys through our roster. Now, we are not going to be offering contracts to people because we can't. We use the Tai Chi cheat, if you guys don't know what that is. See this? Hold your shoulder buttons right here when you're choosing your number of companies and difficulty in promoter mode. And it unlocks the ability for you to have a larger roster than six people. So we did that. However, we knocked our money back down to 150k with the mod pack. Uh, we also use the mod pack to go in and adjust the popularity of our wrestlers. Because when you start with six wrestlers, you start with one guy who is, I believe... BCC, C as popularity, another guy that is BDDD, and then two that are CDDD, and then the rest are all Ds in their popularity. So we messed around with that. Where's the best place for me to... I, there we go. Okay, so AK-47 is a CDDD. So is Braden Blackwell because they were the two that went to time. Their match was phenomenal, guys. If you didn't actually check out the GFW Catalyst pay-per-view on the channel, it is on here. It's like three hours long. You should go check it out. It's great. Uh, and then at the same time, Bobby Freedom is our BDDD because he was our FTW champion. And El Fuego Negra was our BCCC because he is or was our heavyweight champion. Uh, so very excited for this, guys. As you can see, the stats are, are pretty ranged, too. I am super excited. 
let's let's get going. Uh, so we do not need to worry about scouting or offering contracts right now. I think we may need to manage stables here because I don't think that I all wrestlers assigned to stables cannot create new stables. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, so basically, we had three stables in GFW, and I kind of messed that up, and they didn't transfer into here, so I'm going to fix those real quick. Uh, but while I'm doing that, I'll explain to you guys what our three stables are and how they work. We essentially had Glory, which was a face stable. We also had... Here, I'm going to use the controller because it's faster. Uh, we also had Blood and Gore, which was our heal faction. And then we had Legend, which was our tweener faction, and the way that Legend works is that they don't really function as a faction that much. They essentially only come together to get each other's backs when the other factions are uh, bullying them, basically. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is make sure that we switch everybody over to their appropriate factions. Now Nero here is an interesting character because he actually was in Blood and Gore, but I'm gonna move him into Legend because when... Catalyst happened, uh, Nero had some bad experiences with blood and gore. Very, very bad experiences. So, let's see. Blood. And gore. Okay. Blood and gore. I'm hoping this is done right, because if it's not, it actually won't pick up, uh... One of the things that we're doing with this mod pack is we're actually using their tag team feature. Blood and Gore is ready to make history. Awesome. Uh, so we are going to create Legend real quick as well. Oh, we have to move people first. Nope. No, no, no. Don't do that. Transfer wrestlers, please. Uh, Glory is what we want because that's where we put everybody for the time being. Brayden is not part of Glory. AK is not part of Glory. Lazy isn't. Nero isn't. Nurse isn't. Uh, Reeve isn't, Richard isn't, and then Xavier isn't. Okay, that should be everybody. Sorry guys, I'm trying to fix this up real quick. Uh, but because of the mod pack, we have some really cool things. Like, we actually get faction entrances. You guys will see, it's awesome. It's very, very cool. So, their name is Legend. And... Long name is Legend as well. And they are neutral, correct. Alright. Now we put everybody into that faction. Uh, I should have done this before I imported them, but honestly, the setup for this, this promotion mode was crazy. Also guys, just in case you're wondering, this is it right here. This is what it's all for. The GFW Heavyweight title. Uh, we have an actual physical copy here. In fact, we were talking about potentially doing events where people like paid 10 bucks to get in and then we would send the winner a title. So that's something that may be on the horizon if that's something y'all would be interested in. I'm just going to put this on my shoulder, it's going to sit there, because uh, nobody in GFW has earned it yet. I'm just kidding, Fuego, this is yours, man, this is yours, but we'll see, maybe it's not, maybe it's Bobby's instead. Uh, okay, so we're going to go back and we're going to schedule our first event here. We don't need to invite, we don't need to cross-promote, however, we may loan somebody to another company, depending on how we end up booked here. We'll do the booking first, and then we'll see where we end up. So, we're going to do a normal card here. Determine the event fight card. Yeah, we know we know all this. Thank you, game. Uh, also, if I didn't tell you guys, we did go with hard difficulty because I wanted a real challenge. If we're going to put WWE out of business, we're going to do it the right way. Uh, okay. So, our first main event will be... Mr. F El Fuego Negra versus Bobby Freedom. Uh, and El Fuego is a luchador, I believe. Or maybe he's not. Maybe they made him a showman. They did make him a showman. Did they make everyone a showman? Uh, Brayden is strong style for some reason. <laughs> Brayden, alright. That, that works though. So everybody is a showman except for Brayden who is strong style. Interesting. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go with Bobby Freedom here. What's even more surprising to me though, honestly, is that like... AK-47 is pretty much a kickboxer. He's pretty much a kickboxer with a couple of wrestling moves. What you will see here is that the mod pack allows us to change our, our belts and stuff. So we have the GFW FTW title right here. I actually got to configure the way that that looked. That is not the title for that match. That is the title for that match. And actually, hmm. Let's make this more interesting. There. Wait, wait, wait. No, that's not quite right, because that essentially means that if we if we do this, then what happens is the winner of that match not only gets a shot at the GFW title, they also become the FTW champion, which doesn't make sense. We're not going to do that. Instead, what we're going to do is this. 
well, first I'm going to move that mouse cursor off the screen because that's annoying. Uh, instead, what we'll do is we'll just make the match as we were talking about, which is AK-47 versus Brayden, the future Blackwell. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited, guys. I don't know if it's showing, but I'm, like, ridiculously excited right now. Uh, so, also, on this card, we are going to want to book some title matches. So, I was thinking we should probably do the GFW faction title, which is going to be... Uh, Blood and Gore versus Glory. Don't, don't, don't. So, for Glory, we will use... Hmm. That'll work. Let's go Kitten... Omar and Victor Wolf. Uh, I do have to tell you guys right now, like, I've done moves for Omar and Victor Wolf, but I haven't had time to go in and tune their, uh, their logic yet, so they're kind of using base logic. Hopefully it's not too terrible. We'll make adjustments to that before the next card for sure, though. Uh, okay, so then for the GFW, or I mean for the Blood and Gore side, we're gonna go with Gore Fist, uh, Crim Rocker, I think, and let's go with Actually, you know what? We're going to do Evil Miss. We're going to do Evil Miss. That's fine. And the reason we're doing that is because I really want this next match. Because it was super, super enjoyable on the uh, the last event. Actually, we're going to do a different match than I thought. Hold on. Uh, okay, the next match on the card is going to be a match that we actually had some story build up for. You see, Nero Sin was having a real rough time after the first event did not go well for him. Gore interfered in his match. He didn't win that. He basically had a really, really rough night and was done with blood and gore and all that. And uh, then we had the debut of Xavier Shamrock, and X has a big mouth. And basically, that ended with the police being called on X and Nero as they destroyed a, a door in the, the gym and all sorts of bad things happened. Anyways, this is a match that needs to happen. We need to see this. Uh, but the other match that I want to see here, because I'm very, very excited to see this again, is our very own Alex G, the last bone shaker versus Nurse Muerto. All the stabectomies for everybody. Let's see. what. How much do we have left now? We have... Currently four matches. We want to try to get to about six matches on the card, I think. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I should have built this from the bottom up. I always start at the end because it, like, seems more logical to me. So one, two, three, four, five. All right. I wonder if we have enough to get a tag match here. Let's see if we can get a tag match here, because if we can get a tag match, we'll do a, a regular tag team title match as well. Uh, we don't have enough members to really construct two faction tag teams. That's unfortunate, so I guess instead we will not do the tag team titles. What titles can we do? We do the light heavyweight. Uh, provided we actually have juniors. I don't know if we have juniors. Hey, we do have juniors. Look at that. So, uh, we're gonna have a light heavyweight match between Kendo and Reeve. Reeve is the mysterious masked man. He is the eye of the storm. All right, here we go. Let's do one more match. And we may swap around the position on the card, too. Okay, so we are going to have an odd man out, unless we decide to have somebody manage here. We're going to do Heel Duco as our opening match versus uh, probably, well, we'll do Lazy Dragon. You guys will see why we're doing Lazy Dragon. Lazy Dragon is one of our funnest acts. Although, since they're going to be in the opening match, we actually won't see them, which is kind of sad. Maybe we'll try. Maybe we'll try the first rookie match and see how much time it takes. Uh, so as you can see, we're not even selling out the small hall in a, a rural area. We are selling out the uh, gymnasium, though. So we could do that. Let's go with the gymnasium. We will sell it out at capacity. Uh, we're not going to do... Actually, let's try this. Let's go small hall and do some advertising. Uh, that's actually never going to balance out at that ticket price, though. So, we will stick to the gymnasium for our first event, because that's what we can fill, guys. Uh, and the reason we're focusing primarily on filling the arena is because filling the arena actually does affect the outcome. It affects your popularity, and it affects your sales, and that's something that I recently learned. You also get penalized for running less than five matches, which is something to keep in mind. The good news is we can loan somebody out, and we're going to loan someone out to... Hmm... Who do we want to loan somebody out to? Let's go ahead and loan someone out to Progress, because I would like to build a relationship with the European wrestlers. Oh, goody, we're, we're going to loan them Richard. Richard is currently a mass nut job who takes orders from a, a cell phone, so that's that's good. Uh, they agreed to the deal. They'll work with the promotion. Awesome. So that, that helps us build some, some rapport with Progress, which is great. 
Let's go in here and check out our training center. We are going to upgrade our gym, of course. We haven't actually spent out yet, so we're going to spend out here real quick. Um, we're not going to spend too much. I do want to make sure we get some basics, though, like the Ring Doctor and the Clinic. Uh, we may not upgrade those again, but we will get the first upgrade to them just because we want to preserve our wrestler's health. And then, of course, we got to get our merch. Got to get that merch, guys. Merch is where it's at. So we're going to get t-shirts here, and we're going to get DVDs and Blu-rays. Uh, and we are almost broke now. So that's that's it for us. We got to see how this card goes, because I may have just overspent a lot expecting things to go well. Here we go, guys. I hope you're as excited for this as I am. I'm actually going to sit the... Uh, Beautiful GFW title down for a minute while I I just held it upside down because I'm a spaz uh, While I get ready to call these matches I hope you guys are as excited for this as I am because this this is great. I love it I love it. We are going to destroy all the other companies. We will take their talent In fact, if there's any wrestlers you guys want to have a tag team with like your dream tag team or your dream match Let me know because we'll make a point to scout them Okay, so we're gonna jump into this first match We'll watch this for a minute. If we start to see it run on too long, like if it goes over maybe five to ten minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the one, the only, Lazy Dragon representing Legend. I'm a little twisted. Lazy is definitely our most twisted wrestler. In fact, it's quite common that his opponents bring a, a bottle of mouthwash out to the ring with them, and you'll see why. Lazy is very unique, and his his offense style is something else. But now, entering the ring, we have Heel Duco, the heel one, coming on in off of the back of that techno music. Uh, Duco, a more traditional Japanese heel. This will be a very interesting matchup. This is basically going to be a matter of whether or not Lazy can affect his style or if Duko's just had enough of it already. And we will definitely get an enjoyable experience here, I can promise you that much. Lazy's matches are always entertaining. Uh, Duko with that kick to the midsection, Lazy escaping though with a to uh, drop toe hold, and a kick again to the midsection. Test of strength here, Lazy obviously not winning that one, Duko gets the best of it, but wait! Lazy rolling through! <laughs> A little early for that, and a roll-up on the ropes. Not necessarily the best decision by Lazy Dragon, but then again, Lazy Dragon's decisions are often questionable. Questionable is a good way to put that. Uh, here we go with another body slam from Heel Duco back in control of this match, just dragging Lazy around the ring like trash. Oh, a kick to the midsection, just putting Lazy down. And Lazy going for the eye poke and an eye rake from Duco. Duco letting Lazy know if you want to go dirty, I am dirtier than you. And now, back and forth, running in and out of the ring. What do we have going on? Okay, Duco setting up in the corner. Lazy Dragon with that big bot. Oh, and here we go. This is what I was expecting. Lazy Dragon with the, uh, the Trouser Dragon Assault. I, I don't even know what to call that. I and I don't think that Duco won in that escape either. I hope he brought mouthwash. That's all I can say. Uh, kick out from, well, not a kick out. He was on the ropes. Lazy Dragon whipped into the ropes, and the two men collide. Duko's timing just a little bit off there. That eye rake, though, was on point. And now Duko's sending Lazy into the ropes one more time, ducking under. What has he got set up here? And I, I gotta say, Duko's rope timing is just not the best I've seen lately. I wonder if he's not feeling well today. And a, a nice, simple Boston Crab from Lazy Dragon. That is honestly the most wrestling-oriented thing I think we've seen Lazy do all match. Exchange of strikes from both men, elbows from Lazy, middle kicks from Duco. <laughs> Sorry guys, I stuttered there for a minute. Uh, Lazy going for the, um, I, I don't, yeah, I, I want to call that an Americana, but that was definitely a very strange America. Wow, Lazy just not, Lazy, you can't just, well, I mean, you can just slap your opponent, but it's generally not considered good form. Uh, Lazy once again putting Duco on the ground, and what do we have here? Oh! Lazy with a headbutt to the groin! This is just not a good night for Duco. I, I hope he's wearing a cup. Eye rake from Duco setting Lazy up for that beautiful snapmare. Oh, and Lazy rolling that, that kick into a dragon screw. What is this? What is this? Uh-oh! <laughs> Lazy with the salad toss! <laughs> And now Duco just working him over with that knuckle barrel. <laughs> oh my gosh, Lazy's style is, is something to behold. 
Now, I'm not sure why the ref didn't break that up. It looked to me like Lazy's foot was under the rope, but I am not in the ring with him, and I cannot say for sure that that is what's going on. Oh, guys, I made a terrible mistake. I'll see if I can fix it between rounds, but we should have the Good Fights Wrestling uh, ring, and we do not right now. We should also have our referee, and we do not right now, so I'll see about fixing those between rounds. My apologies. Lazy with that eye poke again, though. And we have no timer, so I have no way to know how long this match has run. Uh, that is also my fault. This is why this is a pilot, guys. Uh, big, big... Was that an axe handle? I think that was an axe handle from Duco to Lazy, and then a rear chin lock to add some insult to injury. Lazy with the low blow, once again, going downstairs. I mean, that, that seems to be Lazy's thing. He's either going downstairs on the opponent, or he's having the opponent go downstairs on him. Lazy catches himself on those ropes. Duco just chucking him out of the ring like garbage, though. Duco not taking it. He has no interest in Lazy's gar <laughs> crap anymore, but he appears to just be watching Lazy. Waiting, perhaps. Catching his breath, maybe. What's this? Lazy counters whatever Duco was going for there, and what are we going to see here? Oh, Lazy with that stylish elbow drop. I think Lazy was about to spit fire, y'all. The dragon does have flames. Oh, and a nice big axe handle to lay Lazy out. And I think Duco is firmly in control here. One, two, no, doesn't even get a two count. That is something else. Lazy once again going downstairs. I mean, I, at this point, if I'm Duco, I might just tap out to try to you know, ensure that I can have children someday. Duco with a beautiful knee bar here. That might be it. No, Lazy managing to escape that submission. I just, I'm, I'm just saying, y'all, like, th there's some concerns. There's some concerns for the future of Duco's family life. And another stylish elbow drop. But wait a minute, Duco here, double underhook. What is, oh, double underhook face buster. That was huge. What's Duco got planned here? Coming off the ropes with that double foot stomp. Lazy Manhattan dropping. Once again, a shot to the... <laughs> I'm telling you... Oh, and here we go. Lazy Plit... Oh, oh God. I just... I feel bad for Duco, guys. I think Duco needs a, an adult. I think he needs help right now. There is a distinct problem in the ring. <laughs> Duco very irritated here. Double eye rake. Just done with it. Done with all of it. And a beautiful brain buster puts Lazy on his back. Oh, Lazy trying to spit poison into, into Duco's face, but Duco manages to avoid it. And Lazy looks exhausted here, guys. He's just breathing heavily after that, that body slam. And another leg kick, or another mid kick countered with a dragon screw. Lazy very, very on top of that dragon screw counter. Duco chucks him out of the ring again, and now Duco letting the crowd know what for. What is he? Oh, I, th I think Duco intended to go for a suicide dive there, but he just... He just ran out of juice. He ran out of air running after, after the ropes and had to go to the center and breathe. Lazy with a chair now. This is this is going to be an interesting change of events here. If Duco manages to get that chair, I think he's probably going to take out his aggressions on Lazy with it, and it won't end well for, for the Lazy One. <laughs> that is Lazy Dragon's new nickname. We're going to call him the Lazy One from now on. Oh, Duco, is this what we think? Oh, Face Buster onto the leg of the chair. I'm not sure if Lazy is conscious after that. And a beautiful dragon suplex. Lazy folded over completely. I, I, that spinning back kick to the back of the head. Duco firmly in control now. And a V trigger to the spine. I should probably call that something else. Oh, Duco, what is this? A cr I, I'm, I've never seen Duco do this. That is actually one of Lazy Dragon's signature moves. I believe Duco there stealing Lazy's finisher. But this is all Lazy right here. Those gyrating hips. And here we go. Once again, drop and trowel right on top of Duco's face. And I mean, at this point, this match just feels like insult. And then Duco levying the injury. Duco definitely doing more damage here. Chucking Lazy out once again. Duco has quite frankly had enough and now he's going outside. He's done wrestling in the ring. Brain Buster on the outside just trying to hurt Lazy and now Duco has a sledge. Oh my, sledgehammer to the ribs. Oh, and then, ah, that's that's just painful. I don't know about you guys, I see that and oof. I just, it makes me want to grab my knee. Just cutting the legs out from under Lazy there. I am... Guys, my mind just escaped me. I can't remember... 
Ah, uh, I, I love that move, and I can't remember what it's called, so now I'm, I'm kind of confused. And Lazy just doing terrible things to the back of Duko's head here. I don't know what to call that. Uh, Duko, though, with that stepping show tie, that actually dropped Lazy right on the chair. Who knows what we're going to see next? Duko obviously very irritated here. What a rush of strikes. Lazy just crumbled there. And a kitchen sink to roll Lazy over the knee of Duko. And another big dragon suplex folds Lazy over. I am so blown away by the fact that I can't remember what that's, that knee clip was called, essentially. Uh-oh, Lazy Dragon, a full face of groin just for Duko. This is not going to be fun. Duko's going to need to wash thoroughly. But an eye rake from Duko followed by that big spinning back kick. Lazy has been laid out. Could this be it? Double foot stomp. What's, what's Duko waiting for? This is the time to end it. Brain Buster doesn't quite get on top of the chair with that one, though. And now I'm just, I'm not sure what Duko's got planned for Lazy, but Duko looking completely exhausted. A low drop kick to the knee. Lazy spitting <laughs> both of these men, just futilely exhausted. And once again, Lazy catching that kick in the dragon screw. I think that perhaps going for middle kicks on Lazy is just not a good plan. And a big back body drop puts Duko on the mat. Lazy for the first time in a while in control. Oh, and there it is, the crotch claw. Lazy is all over it. This is not a good time for Duko. But the referee, of course, not allowing him to submit there and breaking up that illegal hold. And once again, Lazy just going to the groin. At this point, Duko will not be having children. And Lazy rolls him up with a schoolboy. Duko has just had his entire family line shortened. And that's not to say anything about what Lazy has just done to his face. And Lazy refusing to release that pin there. I, I think he's just comfortable in that spot. An 88% match that ran 19 minutes. No way. Okay, that wasn't actually 19 minutes. This is set to game time, so that was half of 19 minutes. Uh, good match though, 88%. That is a four-star match between Lazy Dragon and Heel Duko. Lazy Dragon, a very entertaining superstar, but definitely not a normal one. Not one you would expect to see. We're going to go ahead and jump into this next match now. Uh, this is one I'm very, very excited for. The Eye of the Storm, the masked mystery Reeve entering the ring now. Not even sure what's going on with Reeve's style here, though. Like, I don't I don't know what the, the brown jumpsuit is all about, but I'll tell you one thing I do know. Reeve can get it done in the ring. Reeve has a wide array of interesting submissions and other attacks that are sort of unexpected, including this strange spell thing he tends to do. Like, I, I don't even know what it is, guys, but I've watched several wrestlers be disarmed by it. And then we have Britain's favorite son, Kendo, one of the crowning members of Glory, defeated Gorfis at our debut pay-per-view catalyst. Kendo is on a winning streak, and he is, like he says, Britain's favorite son. Kendo and Reeve is going to be a very interesting matchup. Reeve with a very unorthodox style, very different from most of the roster, or most of the roster. Kendo, though, working a very British strong style, in my opinion. Lots of, uh, Brit or lots of European uppercuts, just stiff striking, and generally hard-hitting grapples. Snapmare there by Kendo, putting Reeve on his back. Reeve going for that drop kick, but missing. This is, this is what I mean. Reeve will go for strange attacks in strange places, and when they don't connect, it may look silly, but when they land like that, what a series to open this match. Reeve just throwing a combination of kicks, and now Kendo face down on the mat. Oh, and that stiff back kick. Now Reeve going for a camel clutch. Kendo manages to escape though. Kendo off the ropes. What's Reeve got planned here? Just a simple arm drag. And Kendo with an <laughs> Was that an eye poke in a European uppercut? I don't I don't think that was an eye poke. Oh, and a knee stomp. That's definitely gonna take some of the aerial arsenal of Reeve away from him. But Reeve not slouching here in the least. Stiff drop kick to the face. Ow, Kendo with that jab, though. That jab was harsh. And now Kendo in control of this matchup. Snapmare from Reeve. Kendo trying to regain control, but Reeve has just managed to 
maintain control of most of this match. Okay, everybody needs to go and do some rope work, rope work with Coach Scotty, because this is, this is getting embarrassing, guys. Come on. Kendo with that series of European uppercuts, getting the best of that strike exchange. Reeve grounded now. And Kendo with that sliding dropkick, even in a mask like Reeve's, that's gotta hurt. You have to wonder if the dropkick impact on that mask is a transferable force into the face of Reeve. And now Kendo once again in control, dragging Reeve to the center of the ring, but Reeve kicks him in the face to escape whatever Kendo had in mind. And now Reeve dragging Kendo, but both men are up. Kendo with a European uppercut. And a knee stomp again, very much working on that knee. Again, low drop kick to the knee. Kendo working a very deliberate style here, here trying to take the legs away from Reeve and in the process capture the GFW Light Heavyweight Championship for himself. Reeve with a big DDT though, and Kendo could potentially be out right there. Oh, Kendo catching a kick into that dragon screw. Apparently, they need to drill rope work, but our guys are on top of the dragon screw. And Kendo with a European side headlock here. This could be it. Well, I mean, if Reeve taps out to that, then Reeve probably won't be getting a heavyweight, a light heavyweight title shot again anytime soon. But, I mean, he could have got him there. Kendo whipping Reeve into the corner with that counter. And now Reeve back in control. Kendo count, uh, cornered. And Reeve driving the shoulder into the abdomen of Kendo. Big foot stomp to the ribs. Big drop kick to the face. Kendo has just been taking a beating here, and I'm honestly amazed he hasn't been busted open yet. Nice high head kick from Reeve. Just in control of this match, Reeve looking like the eye of the storm that we've all seen before. Kendo managing that kick out at two. This is actually interesting. Like, I thought Kendo was going to dominate this match. Kendo had a great performance at Catalyst. Reeve did as well, but this is just crazy. Reeve once again opening up with that combo, and at this point, oh, a giant shotgun drop kick right there. What? What is this? This is what I'm talking about. I don't understand what Reeve does, but somehow he gets into his opponent's heads, and that is the result. Kendo just paralyzed there for a moment, unsure what to do, and now Reeve completely in control with this bow and arrow lock. I am honestly amazed that Kendo has survived this long with the way Reeve is performing tonight, but Kendo once again slowing things down with that European side headlock. Oh, Kendo with a big rolling kick escape. Quite, quite beautiful there. Kendo definitely one of the most agile members of the roster, and that beautiful underarm suplex was amazing. Kokeshi to the face, and now Reeve with that pin. Doesn't get him. So close there, so close. Referee pulling his arm up, good sign that that was almost a three count. And Kendo escaping with that, that, uh, that leg trip. Drop toe hold. I am so sorry, guys. This is, <laughs> I haven't done this in a bit. Uh, Reeve with that seated camel clutch right there. Kendo not giving up, though, managing to, to last through Reeve's energy. And now Reeve, God, I, I'm so sorry, guys. Like, I had such a rough night last night. I just feel really off. Apologies if the commentary isn't on point. Uh, kick to the spine from Reeve there. Kendo trying to fight back, but Reeve manages to keep control. And what is this? Reeve rolling Kendo over into one of those unique submissions. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This is the kind of strange thing you will see in a match with Reeve in it. Nobody knows what that even is, right? And then again, he's controlling Kendo. He could strike him right here, but he's using the opportunity to breathe. I don't understand how Reeve does that. He seems to get into the head of his opponents. Big, big drop salt from Kendo there, but it doesn't actually keep Reeve down. And in fact, Kendo himself is so exhausted he's not able to recover. Reeve is just in control of this match at this point. Oh, and a huge Frankensteiner from Kendo. And a kick to the face. Kendo potentially back in this match, chucking Reeve out of the ring. Could we see a suicide dive here? Will we see? Oh, that is a suicide tope. And Kendo is done taking out all the stops here. He realizes that this might be what it takes for him to win the light heavyweight title. He's got to push to that next level and Kendo is not disappointing. The crowd going wild. You can hear them in the background and this exchange of blows, European uppercut, middle kick, Uppercut, middle kick, who's gonna win? Britain's favorite son, beautiful spinning lariat. Oh, but Reeve is back up with that spinning back kick and Reeve is firmly in control. Kokeshi to the face. I thought we could have had a three count right there. That 
Kendo's back up though. Apparently that adrenaline rush kicking in. Kendo with this beautiful submission just wrenching back on the spine and the neck of Reeve. And I've got a Oh, complete shot. Kendo out of nowhere puts him down. Elbow pin, elbow drop pin two. Manages to kick out. Not a two, not almost a three there. That was just a two count. But hey, as, oh, bam, and there we go. Reeve with that thumb to the throat. That could potentially be it. Reeve going up top, though. What is this? Oh, and a beautiful twisting senton. But Kendo's whipped Reeve into the corner. Oh, Ken Dunn! This could be it. That's it. That's Kendo's finisher. If he covers him here, I think he's got this. One, two... No! Reeve manages to kick out. That was a phenomenal kick out from Reeve. I expected it to be over there. Usually we don't see people recover from the Ken Dunn. And now Kendo with a series of European uppercuts taking advantage of the damage he's done. I almost wonder if the mask of Reeve has potentially been caved in by that a little bit. And now Reeve taking this European side headlock as Kendo uses it to catch his breath. Front face lock, Kendo just staying firmly in control here. And now Kendo up top, double knee to the spine. And Kendo with a cover. One, two, three. Kendo is your very first light heavyweight champion. And I predict a riot as well. Kendo doing it here. Reeve fought valiantly, but that match went to Kendo. No questions asked. I am just amazed at how good of a match that was. 91%, that is a four and a half star rating for our very first match. Excellent job from both performers. Reeve and Kendo definitely looking good to me tonight. Uh, now, I am gonna take a second here real quick, guys, to go ahead and fix the ring and stuff because I had forgotten to do that between the last match. Uh, so we're gonna jump into that and we'll say, do this and then do this. Our next match should be in the GFW ring with our very own GFW referee, Game Goon. Uh, and I'm trying to think of if there was anything else in here we really needed to modify, but I don't think there is. No, that should be it. That should be it. Okay. New champion is crowned. Kendo is your very first GFW light heavyweight champion. And the next match will be the master of stabectomies, Nurse Muerto, versus the last bone shaker, Alex G. This is going to be a great match, guys. This match at, at Catalyst was the sleeper match of the event. This is my very own beloved. This is Nurse Muerto. I go home with her every night, but in the ring, that's her business. She's got to handle it. I stay here on the announce table just so everybody knows everything is clean, all right? She do got two little horns, and they do get me a little bit, but uh, not as badly as they get everybody else. Nurse Muerto letting everybody know what she thinks of them. <laughs> And Alex G, one of the best performers in Catalyst, like his his performance was bar none, an excellent technical display. He is the last bone shaker, the Alex G. Now Alex G here wanting some revenge, claiming that uh, Nurse Muerto gouged his eye and, and wedged a contact into his eye so he couldn't see while she was stabbing him with a fork at the Catalyst event. Nurse Muerto, not the cleanest wrestler on the roster. Alex G, no cleaner than she is, though. And now, Nurse Muerto opening up with a knuckle arrow, missing with that chop, but landing the thrust kick, and the two are now having a test of strength, and Nurse Muerto appears to be winning, going for that drop toe hold. I'm, I'm thinking, perhaps, that the drop toe hold was a means of avoiding being overpowered there, and Alex G hitting that nice fireman's carry, followed by a simple arm ringer just to, to work over that arm a slight bit. And Nurse Muerto just throwing a series of strikes here. Absolutely no holdback on Muerto's side. I rake from Alex G. I wonder if Nurse Muerto's contact is stuck in her eye now. Uh, Alex complaining and complaining repetitively about how that contact lens was the entire cause of his loss. Nurse Muerto with that knee to the groin, though. That, that'll cause you some loss, too. And perhaps a corner grapple here? Yes, Nurse Muerto! What is this? Tying Alex up on the ropes with that tarantula. And I mean, if Alex could turn a around, at least he'd have a nice view. Uh, Alex with that eye rake. Missing the big drop kick here. Kick to the gut. Muerto still in this, though. Both of these competitors still in this. This even, very, very even so far. Uh, biggest spot so far, biggest hit so far from Muerto with that try or that tarantula on the ropes nice counter there into that backdrop and followed up with a simple elbow drop just simple clean and efficient 
Snapmare from Nurse Muerto. Both of these wrestlers have a very uh, pristine technical background, although neither one of them particularly leans on it entirely. Nurse Muerto preferring instead to stab people with a fork when the referee is not looking. Uh, Muerto with that rear chin lock here, just maybe wearing Alex down. I honestly think she's just biding her time. Low blow to Alex, and what she got up in mind here, a camel clutch just stretching the spine, the lower back and the neck of Alex G. But Alex G kicking out, or not kicking out, escaping the hold, whipped off the ropes, and Nurse Muerto with a simple straight show tie there to put Alex down, almost just a, a tap on the head. That was almost insulting in my opinion. Uh, and now Muerto just working Alex over on the ground, knee to the groin again. If you work at GFW, you should probably wear a cup. Just say, oh wow, that was a huge tombstone pile driver. I don't even know where that came from. Alex is up though, a big eye rake there. And here we go, Nurse Muerto shielding Game Goon from the view, but he catches it and tells her, no, you need to stop. She just stabectomied Alex. This is not what Alex wanted in this match. This is not a good turn of events. Alex bleeding profusely from his forehead and a uh, fireman's carry there to try to regain control. And now the two are exchanging strikes. Muerto with these overhand punches and Alex responding with a, a chop to the chest. Who's gonna get the best of this one though? Alex winning that strike exchange, perhaps back in control here and a knee to the groin. Alex, I don't think that has the same effect on women, but I could be wrong, I could be wrong. I myself, the announcer, not the wrestler. Uh, Alex, once again in control, but Muerto with that eye rake to seize control. Oh, and a huge thrust kick off of the eye rake. Alex is just not having a very good night tonight. That, that blood just pouring from his, oh, and Alex tries to counter with that chop and Muerto ends up hitting him with a kitchen sink. Big flying splash from Muerto holding her own gut there. Definitely not something she was able to capitalize on. And Alex raked up and then bang, kitchen sink again. Alex has just been folded over. Muerto preferring to use this kitchen sink to really work the body over. We saw this at Catalyst. Oh, and again to the spine this time. Muerto is not relenting, just continuously working the body of Alex. His head's already busted open at this point. I have to believe that Muerto's strategy is to bleed Alex out and then work the ribs so that he can't breathe, but we can't guarantee that that's, that's necessarily what she's doing. And realistically, I don't know how well that's gonna work on somebody who's as, uh, what's, what's the right word, as wily as Alex is. Oh, and a huge miss there. Huge, huge miss from Muerto. Alex is back up, potentially taking control after that. Oh, and a beautiful chop. That's just, I heard that, that stung. And now Alex with an arm ringer here trying to regain control of this match. Muerto returning a chop of her own. Alex grounded again and what are we, oh, again with that knee to the spine. Muerto just refusing to allow Alex the chance to recover here, working on his conditioning. And Alex hitting a snap suplex, decides to bounce off the ropes, but Muerto's back up, so he stops. I rake to Muerto, going off the ropes. Alex obviously tired here, you can see the speed decrease and a big spinning DDT from Alex. That actually could help him get back into this match. Oh, chop to the chest again. Alex is down and Muerto is up top. Big elbow drop to the spine. What do we have here? Oh, kick to the leg. Alex has just been getting worked over everywhere, but now a nice solid headlock from Alex. Unfortunately, too close to the ropes, but forcing the referee to count it though, and a binding suplex. Will he get her there? No, does not does not even get a count. Ended up binding suplexing her on the ropes. I think with the blood in his eyes and with the, the wind knocked out of him, Alex just didn't realize where he was in the ring. Oh, look at those kicks to the face. Alex just using very little energy to do some very painful damage to the face region. And Muerto now with a giant flying splash, but once again it's to the spine and she doesn't get the cover. Huge kick from Alex dragging Muerto to the center of the ring and here it is, the cover. One. Two, wow, I, I didn't expect the two count there. Muerto, to my cr uh, my knowledge, oh, huge STO. That was a big STO. That'll rearrange your breathing for sure. Oh, and a kick to the shin again. I think Muerto just working the entire body now. But Alex, once again, going to that side headlock, just wrenching the neck, and the ref is telling him, you gotta stop, you can't pull on the hair like that. Muerto eye raking, leaving Alex groggy, and then kicking the shin again, working over that leg. And a huge kitchen sink. I, 
At this point, I think she's just punishing him. One, two, no, kick out. I thought Alex might have got her with that roll up right there. Alex jumping over Muerto and Muerto colliding with Alex, dropping him to the mat. Another one of those kitchen sinks. Muerto just working those ribs. I can't, I can't imagine that, oh, Alex though with that nice arm ringer combo. I can't imagine that if Muerto manages to hit her finish here, she doesn't get it. Drop salt from Alex, leaving Muerto grounded. And now Alex just wrenching on the neck, just twisting. And I gotta say, Alex is, oh, I I'm telling you, Alex, I don't think that has the same effect, man. I really don't. Uh, but Alex is, is definitely getting back into this fight. This strike exchange here. I honestly won't be surprised if the exchange goes to Alex. Back and forth they go. And Muerto mocking Alex before throwing that big flying head kick. That was just insult to injury in its purest form. A nice chop from Alex drops Muerto, who was going for a running strike there. And now Alex with that spinning DDT. Muerto laid out in the center of the ring. What can we expect next from these two? Alex dropping Muerto, dragging her to the center. What are we going to see here? Scoops her up and bouncing off the ropes. Another big spinning DDT. I think perhaps Alex is trying to work over the head, thinking maybe that if he can slow Muerto down, if he can make her dizzy, groggy, it'll give him a chance to get back into this match. But once again, that blood pouring down Alex's forehead cannot be helping. Oh, and that was a beautiful technique. Northern Light Suplex rolls into a cross armbar. Unfortunately, he is on the ropes. Alex once again having trouble with that positioning. It's got to be the blood in his eyes. Binding Suplex here. This could do it. One, two, Three! Alex gets her! Alex redeeming the loss to Nurse Muerto at Catalyst, and Alex shrugs. What am I supposed to do about it? Oh, but he's not done! And another binding suplex to Muerto. Alex is not finished here, continuing to assault Nurse Muerto. That was just brutal. A four-star match there, just brutal. The fork, the stabectomies, everything about that match was just painful, guys. Next up, we have this very storied matchup, the brawl that turned into a police call, Xavier Shamrock versus Nero Sin. I'm actually super excited for this match. Xavier Shamrock making his in-ring debut. I honestly hope that Nero destroys him. The pain away from me. I, I, sorry guys, I love the entrance music of all of our stars. I get very into it. Xavier Shamrock, the essence of excellence, one of the most storied members on the roster. This man has held major titles in every company that he has ever worked in. And he decided to fight with GFW's monster, Nero Sin. And this could end very, very poorly for him. Because if Nero decides to swing the axe, X may not get up, guys. This may be the final swing of the axe for X. Miro very, very aggressive and powerful and honestly kind of frightening at this point. After Catalyst, Nero was so upset about how things went that he just kind of snapped. Oh, wow! X opening this match, trying for a head and arm choke on the big man early. I don't know what he was thinking there, though, because Nero just powered out of it absolutely unfazed. Nero hitting a, a slam to the mat right there, <laughs> a push down. I don't even know what you technically call that. Oh, but X getting Nero on the ground and trying to go for some mounted elbows. Nero just shrugs him off, though. The size difference here is unbelievable. And Nero now working this torture half crab, or yeah, torture half crab, stepping on the face of X. And now X trying to mount Nero from the back, and Nero escapes. Big elbow to the skull of X, and oh, Nero going for an anaconda vice early here. What in the world? I don't know how that happened, uh, but that was just a very, very early attempt at a finish from Nero, and Nero just dominant in this match so far. Every time X tries to mount offense, Nero just stuffs him down. The big man is just overpowering right here. Dragging X to the center of the ring and going for a cover early. This might be a little early for, for covering, but Nero definitely not lacking for confidence at this point. Just pressing X over his head and then dumping him on the mat. And once again, working this torture crab early on. Perhaps trying to disable the kicks of X. We know that, that X's speed 
was a problem for Nero in their gym confrontation, but that was honestly more about cunning anyway, X managing to trap Nero in a doorway before Nero just ripped the door off the hinges and smashed X into the wall with the door. Uh, Nero just ridiculously overpowering X here. I I honestly don't know what, what we're going to see happen next. Uh, X going into the corner and Nero just lifting X onto the top rope very early for this kind of move. Oh! Oh my god! Giant seated powerbomb! That could be it, too! Wow! I am amazed that X kicked out of that. This has just been a dominant match for Nero right now. I am amazed this is going this way. I've never seen X be destroyed like this. X has always managed to at least appear competitive. And in this case, Nero just wearing him down. You can see the gray in X's beard, though. Perhaps the age showing here. Nero not a young man himself, though. Just a big man. And a huge exchange of strikes, which Nero wins, of course. Look at the power differential. And now the Anaconda Vice from Nero. This could absolutely be it. We already saw a near fall. I don't know if X is going to manage to escape this, even with his extremely technical background. Oh, and a stepping show tie just to rip X off of his feet. I, I'm not entirely sure that X is even really conscious right now. He seems to be out on his feet. X with a body slam, though. Is he coming back? Is that what we're seeing here? Oh, and a series of elbows leaves Nero groggy. And then X with a kick to the shin. X getting a second wind here. Beautiful, beautiful dragon screw on the ground to work the knee of the big man, but Nero back in control, managing to stop that momentum that X was starting to build here. In order for X to be successful in this match, he actually needs that momentum. He has to maintain it, because if he allows Nero to slow him down, we're just going to see more of this. More of these Anaconda devices being applied, more of those stiff headbutts putting X on the floor. He has to stay in control and maintain momentum, and right now it doesn't look like he's going to be able to do it. Right now it looks like Nero is going to be the winner of this match. X whipping Nero off the ropes, what's he got in mind here? Misses with a crossbody, and that's that's my point, he can't afford to go high risk right now. X needs to put Nero on the mat and try to work him down there because he is not winning the, the standing fight. One, two, three, wow, Nero just decimating X. Just destroying him, and oh, and now a low blow for good measure. Oh, what has he got planned here? Nero, please stop that. Oh, and a spear to the already decimated X. This is just brutal. I am a 63% match. Nero just absolutely crushing X there. That was not what I expected. X performing way, way below the standard I would expect of him. Wow, Nero just destroyed him. That's insane. <laughs> Uh, all right, our next match is a big GFW faction title match between Glory and Blood and Gore. And I think we're okay on time. Well, we're we're at an hour on time, but I, we're on the third match, so I think we'll be okay. This is sad. Uh, okay. So this is the the mod not working right here. These three are supposed to enter as Glory with Glory's music, and that did not happen. Uh, so this is Kitten's music right here. Sorry, guys. This is why we have a pilot episode. However, we do have Victor Wolf, Omar Jackson, and Kitten Canaveral representing Glory versus Blood and Gore. It's fast. Blood and Gore, consisting of Gorefist, Evil Mistress, and Crim Rocker here, entering the ring to claim the faction titles. Their music, of course, is playing correctly, and I love it. Such an aggressive, violent faction. Gore and I do not see eye to eye right now. We have a little bit of an issue since he decided to throw me through my office window in the training center, uh, which I still don't have a clear explana explanation for. We have been friends for years. I don't know what his deal is. Uh, Gore overpowering Kitten there, it seems, but no, they, they break off evenly here. Kitten missing with that big flying dropkick, and Gore throwing a showtie, which gets ducked here. Kitten countering with that wheelbarrow slam. And now, or that water drop slam, I think it's called. <laughs> Gorefist overpowering Kitten here, and ends it with a drop toehold. Not what I would expect from the more Smash Mouth stylings of Gorefist. But 
you never can tell. You never can tell what a, a test of strength is going to end with in professional wrestling. Kitten with a shooting star pin out of nowhere, but it does nothing. Gore is, is much too powerful to submit to something like that this early in the match. Tagging out to Evil Miss here. Potential double team. No, Kitten fights out of it, managing to stay clear of that painful, painful double team from Evil and Gore. If they had caught her there, they might have just planted a couple knees in her chin. Let's put it that way. Uh, Evil missing with that spinning back kick, and Omar Jackson is in the ring. Huge, huge arm drag on Evil, and then a knee to the shin. Evil managing to fight back. Kitten's still in the ring, but Evil's tagging out to Krim Rocker now. Krim trying to get a hold of Omar before he can manage to put Evil on the mat, and that works. Krim in control, Evil getting out of the ring though. Nice frequent tags from Blood and Gore here to make sure that they stay fresh. Gore just staring down the referee here. I, I don't know if that was meant to intimidate Game Goon to, to convince him to back off their corner or what, but Gore was just staring up and down at Game Goon. <laughs> If I was Game Goon, I would be a little bit worried. We've seen that Gore is kind of a sawed-off lunatic. Gore managing to interfere in every Blood and Gore match at the Catalyst event, uh, refusing to keep himself from being involved in anything. And now Victor Wolf here, big pin cover, doesn't get it. Match hasn't really gone on that long. I'm not surprised that that pin cover didn't succeed. But I'm very excited to see how Victor Wolf does in his debut here. Once again, guys, Victor and Omar are using base logic. This is a little out of character right here. Uh, they're using base logic, so that is my fault. Hopefully that logic will be tuned better uh, soon. That being said, very confident in Victor's overall moveset and style. Very, very excited to see him perform here. Go, Victor, go. Nice stiff lariat to put Evil on her back. And what's he got in mind there? Going for a big punch, but misses. Victor being put in the corner. Oh! Oh, what do we have here? Evil miss was... Irish whipped and missed that that whole thing misfired along with the camera angle on that So I'm gonna have to work on the camera angles for that. Sorry guys uh, I hope you are enjoying our current camera angle though very nice camera angle brought to us by the mod pack from Carlzilla Check down in the description if you're on PC and you'd like to use that mod pack Victor here big big hammer blow to the spine And now here we go Simple Boston Crab, nice, efficient, working hold, meant to wear down the lower back of the opponent so that they can't lift anymore. Uh, Victor, a very, very technical wrestler, very sound in that regard. Oh, and a double drop kick from Kitten and Victor. That was absolutely glorious. You know, our glorious, like glory, not, not that other guy. <laughs> huge, huge push down by, by Gore, leaves Kitten on the mat, and I'm honestly surprised we didn't see a double team there. Oh, Kitten not having it. That big paw slap coming to the chest of Gore, but who will win this striking exchange? Back and forth they go, and Gore overpowering Kitten. I have to say I'm not surprised there. Gore is an absolute animal. I mean, look at this man. He wrestles in sunglasses. You have to have confidence to do that. Th th those could break. They could end up in your eyes. There's so many things that could go wrong with that. Gore not caring a bit. Gore just absolutely a monster. But Kitten maintaining control gets that nice jackknife cover there. And look at that nice, nice spinning technical... Tr uh, I, I think that's technically called a technical spin. But that is just a beautiful maneuver there. And all of Glory in the ring now. I'm, I'm amazed we haven't seen a double team yet. Oh, Gorefist with a face buster. Just working over Kitten. Gore's entire... Okay, so we obviously have some camera issues in tag matches, guys. Lessons learned. Big double powerbomb from Kitten and Victor on Evil, but Gore is still in the ring and works Victor down with that pullback clothesline. Evil setting Victor up, but Krim is in the ring now. Gore is in the ring. All three of them are in the ring. And Evil just chucking Victor out on their side of the ring. This is not a good place for Victor Wolf to be. All three members of Blood and Gore circling him. Evil with a kendo stick in her hands. But now Kitten and Omar Jackson are here. And this is absolutely broken down. There are weapons everywhere. There are people brawling. The crowd is going crazy. Victor Wolf still being counted out though. And Evil Miss has the, the light bar there. 
Oh my lord, this is just breaking down completely. This has turned into utter chaos. Crimrocker with a time bomb on Kitten in the ring. Neither one of them is the legal man. And Victor Wolf pinning in the middle of all of this. This match has broken down into absolute chaos. It's incredible, guys. It's absolutely incredible. And oh, Crim Rocker there landing on the light rod when he threw that big flying head kick and busting himself open. He is now the Crim Rocker for a whole bunch of reasons. Oh, look at this. What do we got here? Ah, oh, Omar Jackson taking a huge double knee. And I don't know how Omar recovered from that. I really don't, but he is up almost immediately. Just shows you the kind of wherewithal that Omar Jackson has. Such a, an athletic performer. I mean, look at him. He's like a wall of muscle. And Crim Rocker here covering once. Doesn't even get a two count. Omar Jackson very fresh here. Not having spent much time in the ring at all. Crim Rocker, on the other hand, bleeding from that light. I, I keep calling them lights because I'm a spaz. I can't remember what they're actually. Light tubes. I keep saying light bar. Okay, that light tube busting Crim Rocker open, and now Victor and Omar both in the ring, but Crim Rocker landing that big, big step up Enziguri that he missed to fall through the light bar. The light tube. <laughs> I will get better, guys. It, it has been a while since we called one of these events, and last time I had a color commentator to help me, so I'm like trying to go 100% 100, 100 of the time here, and I just keep stumbling over terms. Uh, once again, this is just broken down into chaos. Crim Rocker and Omar fighting on the outside with Kitten, and the camera angle's lost here. I gotta, I gotta fix the camera angle, guys. Hold on. <laughs> this is driving me crazy. Let's go find our camera options, and we will toggle off our free cam for a moment. Well, it's back in control now. We'll toggle off the free cam as we need. Uh, although that could actually be worse. Maybe I'll leave it alone. If we toggle off the free cam, the cam might go crazy. Well, if we toggle it off, it'll reset. But if we try to turn it back on mid-match, it might go crazy. So we'll just let it be. Lessons have been learned, though. Tag matches have issues with uh, camera angles. Oh, oh, here we go. Big elbow drop misses from Omar. And now Gore is back up. Big headbutt. And Gore just levying those knuckle arrows to the face. Trying to potentially bust Omar open here, and for all we know, Omar may be bleeding. That blue headband does a really good job of protecting his forehead from visible signs of bleeding. And now Omar with a drop kick to the back of Gore's skull. And this match has just complete. Oh, Gorefest! We have a Gorefest here! Oh my! Gore just losing it and destroying Omar, pinning with a nonchalant foot pin. That is the kind of arrogant jerk that Gorfis really is. Uh-oh, double team here from Victor Wolf and Omar. Big powerbomb, center of the ring. And Omar still in, sets up Gorfis for a nice drop kick to the shin from Victor Wolf. Victor Wolf just being... Oh, sniper cross, cross face, sniper cross face. This could be it. This could be it. No, they managed to break it up. I'm not even sure why Omar and Kitten did not protect that submission. Victor Wolf could have easily had Gore Fist right there. And here we go. Triple Brain Busters from Victor Wolf. Oh, and he's calling for it now, guys. Be prepared. Victor Wolf is done. But Gore managing to escape and get the tag to evil before Victor can capitalize on the damage. And now Victor is once again. Here we go. Triple Brain Buster on evil. Victor Wolf saying, fine, you want to tag evil in? Have another. Uh, Victor Wolf, absolutely impressive right now. Letting the world know that this is it. He is done with the games. Chucking Evil Miss out of the ring, and he is not going to follow her, which is a wise decision, but he is being double teamed while Game Goon counts out Evil. This is dreadful. Behind Game Goon's back. Oh, Gore! Is Blood and Gore are just destroying Glory behind Game Goon's back while he counts out Evil. And now you have to... Oh, evil with a sledgehammer, Game Goon counting her down. She's managed to drop the sledge just in time, but that whole thing was a mess. Game Goon absolutely distracted, counting out evil, did not notice that Blood and Gore were working over Glory in the ring. And now Kitten covering evil miss. One, two, two and a half, doesn't quite get it. That's crazy. This match is just chaos, pure chaos between Glory and Blood and Gore. 
And now Evil Miss tagging out. Oh, big knees to the face though before she leaves. Oh, she was calling for a Shinkaza there. All right, I, I think I just mispronounced that. I think it's a Kinshasa. Anyway, either way, this match is just completely broken down. I don't know about you guys, but I am absolutely impressed. You can hear the, the audience popping for this match. It has just been back and forth craziness the entire time. A beautiful spinning back kick from Kitten who says, no, 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 don't mess with the Kitten. Omar Jackson here, big double arm suplex. And Kitten up top, what do we, oh, I thought she was gonna go for it there. Pin from Omar, one, two, doesn't get him, does not get Krim Rocker here. Krim Rocker managing to keep control of the match, or rather to keep in the match. Hits a huge power bomb, but has it broken up because, of course, Omar escapes that. Oh, ho, ho, big elbow drop missed. And Krim Rocker is just wearing the crimson mask. It is all over him now. I don't even know. Oh, choking the throttle. This is it. No, Evil gets it. Evil choking the throttle. Omar Jackson taps out, and she refuses to release the hold. I don't know why Glory isn't breaking this up, though. And... Wow, they are just working over Omar Jackson in the ring after the match. An 88% match, a four-star match. The first ever GFW faction champions are blood and gore right there winning with a beautiful match. That whole thing just broke down. That was pure chaos. I have to say, when Game Goon was counting Evil Miss out and we were watching the chaos in the ring, I just couldn't believe how well that unfolded. Like... It's almost like Victor Wolf cost his team there by chucking Evil out of the ring. And I don't think that that happened because he, you know, was doing it on purpose. But it's just crazy how something like that can backfire on you. Going ahead, let's move on to our co-main event. This is the one we've all been waiting for. At least I have. Uh, this is the future. Brayden Blackwell versus AK-47. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the future... Brayden Blackwell. Brayden Blackwell telling you he is going straight to the top, folks. There is no quit in Brayden Blackwell. But there's no, no quit in this man either. AK-47 made one of the most impressive showings on the card at Catalyst, competing in multiple title matches, I believe. I, it's been so long, I actually can't remember. But AK-47, or no, rather, AK-47 competed in one title match and had an amazing match that went to a draw and time with Brayden Blackwell here. And now the two men just opening up here. Brayden catching the kick from... AK and managing to dragon screw him down, but AK landing that nice knuckle arrow. And now AK with a water wheel drop to escape whatever Braden was going for there. These two men starting off slowly, feeling each other out a little bit more than I think they did at Catalyst. A uh, nice snapmare from Braden puts a AK on the ground, but AK with a nice combination of strikes twice in a row, just unleashing here. AK, I think, trying to use the striking advantage early on. Beautiful knuckle arrow from AK. Oh, and another kick caught into a dragon screw from Brayden. Brayden working a very counter-wrestling style this match, it seems. Uh, but AK is just brutal so far. Combination after combination. Blackwell escapes and an elbow to the back of the skull. This is why Brayden Blackwell is so dangerous, guys. He is not necessarily the most experienced worker in the company, but when it comes to finding a way, Brayden Blackwell always does. Beautiful series of chops there, and Brayden going for an early pin, which AK kicks out of immediately. Uh, nice, nice fireman's carry there from Brayden Blackwell. I'm not even sure if that, that pin was meant to, to actually pin AK, or if Brayden was simply trying to be thorough. Brayden has a very, very uh, technical, not not technical style, but I mean, he is our only strong style performer. He has a very thorough style. Lots of covers when it makes sense. Very, very on top of his opponents when they're down. Uh, but AK just firmly in control here. Winning that strike exchange, AK giving a pin of his own, perhaps trying to throw Brayden Blackwell off here. Both of these men, though, you have to believe they both know that a pin is not happening this early in the match. 
AK with a big, big side suplex. And now this match is just nice and back and forth from both of these men. Braden Blackwell missing with that Larry. It gets kicked in the shin to be dropped. And now AK bouncing Braden off the road. Oh, and a big spinning back fist. That'll do some damage. But Braden countering with an elbow to the back of the skull and then dropping the knees on AK's spine. AK once again with that side suplex. And now the, the match action is just slowing down again. Both men trying to feel each other out. Huge series of strikes from AK though puts Braden on the mat. And I mean, we saw a lot of this in their first matchup. AK landing series of strikes and going for pins and just not able to put Braden away. And then Braden coming back and levying a lot of offense. Braden with a snapmare there setting up for something, but we don't know what yet. Doesn't seem like it matters. AK manages to get up quickly. Oh, and a swinging neck breaker from Braden Blackwell puts AK on his face on the mat. And another series of chops. Braden Blackwell just not willing to allow AK to get back into this, but AK with a quick kick to the shin, managing to get some, some space and some control. Oh, and a huge dashing right hand. That's got to do some damage. Oh, AK showing us a little bit of wrestling there with a power bomb, and now he is calling for it. Schoolboy roll up. That was not what we expected. Oh, and I thought he had him there, but Braden manages to kick out. I legitimately thought AK had him there. The schoolboy roll-up, not what we were expecting there. Typi typically, when AK pulls the trigger, it's the setup for the headshot. But that was not what we saw there. Braden Blackwell with a nice snapmare here. I'm, I'm honestly amazed that these two men are having kind of a slower-paced performance here. Like, at, at Catalyst, they were just off the hooks. Huge, huge head kick to the back of Brayden Blackwell's skull. But I think maybe they're just being more meticulous here. Like, both men realize that the last match didn't go the way they wanted. Huge senton from Brayden Blackwell. And once again, just working those neck chops. Just working those neck chops. And I have to believe that Brayden Blackwell is setting up for the wave of the future here. Trying to damage the neck as much as he possibly can before he goes for it. And a big punch to the back of the skull from AK-47. Oh, and a knee to the face. AK with that flying knee. You gotta believe that Braden's head is hurting right now. The two men colliding there, the rope work, once again, a bit of an issue. And now AK with an elbow to the spine. Spinning back kick to the back of the skull. And another kick to the back of the head. This is a thing that we've noticed about AK. You see, in mixed martial arts and kickboxing, strikes to the back of the head are not usually allowed. But in professional wrestling, it's as legal as a headlock. And AK-47 is more than willing to take advantage of that, throwing hard strikes to the back of people's heads. And now both men back up. AK missing with that strike. And what is this? Oh, Braden working over the legs. Braden has been known to finish with a sharpshooter. That move is one that he likes to use to work the legs over in advance. And then a kick to the legs. Pretty obvious here that Braden is, is working over those legs. But you have to wonder. You have to wonder if that's actually what he's going for. We've seen him work the neck. We've seen him work the legs. I wonder if Braden is just trying to keep AK guessing here. Working the back there now, too. Now, the back and the neck are the areas most affected by the wave of the future, but the back and the legs are the areas most... Oh, and, and Braden being cocky, showing you the back of his hand before he spinning back fists AK-47. And now, <clears throat> Braden has gotten firmly back into this match. Very, very back and forth here. AK trying to bounce off the ropes, not having enough time here. I think Braden has done enough damage now that AK is losing a step. And AK is, is potentially in danger here. Braden setting up for not one, but two of his different finish. Oh, and a running step up uh, Enziguri from the corner to AK-47. AK misses with that spinning back kick, but only because Braden is gasping for air and unintentionally ducks it. But then a kitchen sink to work the body again. I have to say, 
that in AK-47's case here, the headshot primarily works on the head, and he's done a lot of damage to the head of Braden Blackwell, but Braden Blackwell has given himself a couple of options, and that makes it worse on AK-47, because AK-47 here is probably going to need the headshot to finish, and Braden knows all he has to do is watch out for that headshot, and he'll be okay. In AK's position though, it's not like that. Brayden has worked the back, the neck, and the legs. Brayden could go for the sharpshooter at any point to finish this, or he could just try to finish up with the wave of the future. And I think my voice is starting to go, so I apologize for that, guys. We are an hour and 15 minutes in. This is probably the longest recording I've done where I'm sort of projecting my voice a little more and trying to be in the action, you know? So bear with me. I'm gonna have to start drinking like hot tea or something when I record instead of coffee. Oh my god, and a headshot from AK-47, that could be all she wrote. One, two, three, he gets him! AK-47 goes on to face the winner of our next match for the GFW Heavyweight title next week right here on GFW Mayhem. On the other hand, unfortunately for Braden Blackwell, I mean, it's not unfortunately, it's fortunately for Braden Blackwell, he will still get an opportunity at the FTW title next week against the loser of our main event. Here we go, folks. I'm honestly blown away by that. Like, I thought that match was going to go a lot longer, and I felt like Braden working the back and the legs and the neck meant that he was potentially going to have more options and get that win. But here we go, the main event of the evening... This is El Fuego Negra versus Bobby Freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ri I deleted that, but it's not gone on this one. Whoops. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ring. Former GFW FTW champion Bobby Freedom. He has apparently grown very accustomed to that title being around his waist and is not going to be abandoning it today. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, the historic first ever GFW heavyweight champion, El Fuego Negra, the Black Flame, does indeed burn tonight on GFW Mayhem. And this match promises to be a great one. I, I am honestly really excited for this match, guys. Bobby Freedom, one of the most wherewithal having wrestlers on the roster seemingly unwilling to yield to unstoppable forces and El Fuego Negra basically surprised everyone in Cat at the Catalyst event when he made it all the way to the finale and then won the GFW heavyweight title. El Fuego Negra is not to be taken lightly. This man is an experienced veteran luchador and he will work you over just like that. That is a brutal submission to open this matchup. And now Bobby Freedom has whipped him into the corner, but El Fuego Negro recovering way too quickly for him to capitalize on that. This is such an interesting matchup, and of course, the Black Flame burning as brightly as ever, we hope. But I'm, I'm very excited for how this stylistically is going to match up. As we can see, Bobby Freedom working those suplexes off the Irish Whip. That is the way that Bobby likes to work. A very mat-based wrestler versus El Fuego Negra, who he can hit you from the air. He doesn't go up top all that often, but he can hit you from the air, he can hit you from the ground, he can pretty much hit you from anywhere, and there is no stopping the insurmountable spirit of the Black Flame. Now the more interesting thing here is that this match has even further implications if you think about our current title picture, because Glory is holding the light heavyweight title, but Blood and Gore holds our faction titles now. Bobby Freedom here representing Glory, El Fuego Negra representing Blood and Gore. Whoever wins this match will give their faction a distinct title advantage in GFW. And you have to wonder how they're going to use that. Blood and Gore honestly have been trying to gain control of this company since they came into it, it seems. And the idea that they're going to have the majority of our titles is not one that I'm particularly comfortable with. Bobby Freedom dragging El Fuego Negro out of the corner, and here we go. Snap Suplex leaves El Fuego Negro. I'm just going to refer to him as El Fuego from now on because it's just a mouthful. Uh, Bobby with that elbow to the back of the skull, but Fuego is unwilling to accept it, just kicks him in the face to escape that pickup. And now the two men are exchanging blows, 
El Fuego surprisingly strong for a man of his stature. And now here we go, a nice triangle neck lock from El Fuego just trying to wear down Bobby Freedom. I don't know if it's a good plan for El Fuego to work the mat as much against Bobby. I mean, the mat is where Bobby is strongest. If it was me, I would probably play away from that. Huge flipping senton to the spine of Bobby Freedom. And now Bobby Freedom with the roll-up. Or not the roll-up, rather, but the uh, backslide. El Fuego reversing with a brain buster of his own. Leaves Bobby Freedom outside of the ring and El Fuego shrugging it off. I don't know what happened, guys. I just don't know. Uh, now Bobby Freedom with a side headlock takeover and a side headlock choke. Big elbow to the spine of El Fuego Negra. And here we go with a sickle hold from Bobby Freedom. Not getting the submission he was looking for though. Bobby Freedom, a very terrifying competitor. Oh, but El Fuego is no joke himself. Beautiful spinning move here and I'm waiting. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. I was waiting for El Fuego to really, really wrench back on that. Uh, El Fuego, one of the most vicious submission artists in the company, really. And Bobby Freedom with a nice, nice overhead scoop. We're waiting to potentially see, though, an American Dream here. I, I don't know if the American Dream is going to be something. He's able to lock on El Fuego, though, with El Fuego's huge technical background. A big kick caught Enziguri there from El Fuego, who rolls up Bobby Freedom with a Mahistro Cradle. Only a two count, though. Doesn't get him there. Does not manage to finish it. Bobby with a double leg takedown, and now Bobby just swinging El Fuego around and around, trying to cause all the blood to rush to El Fuego's head and make it easier to lock in that American. Dr oh, El Fuego right there. Beautiful face buster. And what do we. Oh, kick to the groin. This was a very nice athletic competition, and El Fuego just deciding to go low twice in a row. Bobby Freedom has got to have the wind taken out of his sails with that. And what is this? El Fuego with a spinning backslide, but lands against the ropes, and Bobby is immediately broken out by referee Game Goon. Bobby with a trip right there, and now huge, huge uproot German suplex, but El Fuego's feet are on the ropes, and Game Goon breaks the pin. Jawbreaker from El Fuego, and now the cockiness of El Fuego Negra right there. A jawbreaker followed up with a taunt, and now a flying crossbody. One, two, doesn't get it. Could have actually been a pinfall there. I, <laughs> El Fuego Negra has no shortage of confidence in this match. Bobby Freedom letting you all know he is looking out for the audience. Got his eyes on the crowd. Huge takedown from Bobby Freedom, and El Fuego kicks Bobby Freedom off. Doesn't manage to capitalize on that takedown, does Bobby Freedom. El Fuego throwing Bobby out of the ring, and now we're outside. This is Blood and Gore's realm. Bobby not the most comfortable performer outside the ring but he tries to bring El Fuego back into the ring, and El Fuego with a huge sit-out powerbomb on the outside. You can't pin him on the outside, though, Fuego. You gotta put him in the ring. Once again, slamming Bobby face-first into that ring apron, the hardest part of the ring, don't you know? And, and Bobby kicking Fuego for trying to lift him. Oh, and a beautiful sit-out powerbomb again, but Fuego's gotta get back in the ring. Oh, Fuego winning by countout! By count out, what a dastardly villain! <laughs> Didn't even take the match to completion, manages to leave Bobby on the outside with that sit out powerbomb, and El Fuego, in one of the dirtiest wins we've seen all night, managing to capture the title? No! No, the game actually did not give him the title there because it was a count out. <laughs> Oh my, uh, so that was not at all what we were expecting. That final match was kind of a botch. So things like this happen, guys. It, it does happen this way. So I don't know what we're going to do for next week now. Um, this is not at all what I was expecting. I, I guess that El Fuego will face... AK-47 for the GFW Heavyweight title, and Bobby and Brayden will face off for the GFW FTW title. El Fuego essentially costing himself the title there? But you have to wonder, you have to wonder if maybe El Fuego believed that he was going to win the match anyway, so by doing this, all he did was shortcut the match and give himself a little bit less damage going into his match with AK-47 next week. Maybe that's the strategy behind that. Anyways, 
I had a wonderful time recording this show. I hope you guys did too. Let's go ahead and end the event and see what our money looks like. And then we will call this episode. Kendo of Good Fights Wrestling won the GFW Light Heavyweight Belt to become the new champion. Gorfis, Krim, and Evil took the GFW Faction Belt to become the new champions. Uh, we did have great attendance. We had a great success there in the gymnasium. Congrats on running a flawless show. We're ready to book a bigger venue. Sounds good. We're probably not, but it sounds good. Lynch and Orton won the WWE SmackDown titles. Kushida of New Japan won the New Japan Junior Heavyweight. <laughs> Becky Lynch and Randy Orton won the tag titles. Good jobs, guys. Uh, okay, so we didn't make money, but we did reduce the amount of money we spent. Uh, and we do have 62000 left, so we can at least schedule our next show. That's good enough for me, guys. Uh, the month you have, or this month, uh, just so you guys know, I actually found out this is a translation error. This month, Tokyo Joshi Pro have a singles tournament scheduled, is what that is telling us. Uh, okay, so that was our very first event. I thought it went splendidly. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. If you didn't, let me know. What things would you like to see done differently? For sure, let me know. Uh, merchandise is a surefire way. I want to see what our merchandise looks like, by the way. Did we sell a lot? Eh, we sold a reasonable amount. We didn't sell the whole thousand, though, so we know we're not going to be moving thousands of, of units of merchandise right now. That is going to be it, though, guys. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, go ahead and click that like button. If you want to see more great content, be sure to check out the other video series on the channel. Uh, and if you want to subscribe so that you get notified when every GFW Monday Mayhem goes up, because from now on these will be on Mondays every week, uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below and make sure to ding that bell notification. Because every time you ding that bell notification, somebody in WWE gets a gimmick that doesn't stink. Maybe. Probably not. But we'll pretend. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Oh,